I'm going to do a series of videos now uh, on some build tips. Um, uh, I've been building for a while and I figured out a few things and I'm going to tell you about them and some of you are going to hear these things and go, no, no, that's completely wrong. In which case, yeah, everybody, there's lots of different ways to go about this, right? And uh, maybe you'll teach me something. So leave comments if you think I'm totally off the mark, but I'm going to tell you how I do things and you can work from there. The point of this video is going to be <clears throat> decide where your copter is going to break. If your copter crashes hard enough, something's going to break. And I got the idea from David Windestall uh, of, he calls them mechanical fuses. He uses zip ties as mechanical fuses. He intentionally uh, puts zip ties on things that he wants to come off in a crash. Because if you, if you like, think about race cars, right? Back in the day, way, way back in the day, race cars or cars were just like these big steel bathtubs. And when you got into a crash, all of the energy of the crash was transferred to the, the pilot, the driver. And, and that was bad because humans are squishy and, and fragile. And if you look at an F1 car crash, you'll see that when the car hits the wall, stuff goes everywhere. The car disintegrates. And the idea there is to take as much of that kinetic energy as possible and dissipate it by letting the stuff fly away. It takes the kinetic energy with it, right? So... I'm not suggesting you build your copter to fly apart in a crash, but for example, uh, when I install my camera mount super, super tight, what ends up happening is that the camera breaks or the mount breaks. But if I install my camera mount just tight enough, then in a bad crash that would have broken the camera, the camera goes flying into the grass and is probably fine. So the point is that Every time you crash and something breaks, if you're like me, you think, oh, how can I reinforce that so it doesn't break? And whoa, you got to back up and take a minute. Because if, think, ask yourself the next question, if I reinforce this, where is the force going to go? And is what's going to break the next time? Now, sometimes when something breaks, you can reinforce it and it just stops breaking because the place you've transferred the force to is strong enough to take it. So you've moved the force from a weak place to a strong place and everything is fine, right? That's why we go with, uh, you know, these are four millimeter arms instead of three millimeter arms, right? Where have we moved the force to when you strengthen the arm? Well, uh, we moved it to the bottom plate actually. And some of these bottom plates, like you saw in my QAV RXL, maybe can't take it. But I've crashed the Dickens out of this thing. That's a topic for another video and found it to be quite strong. So. If you move the force somewhere else that's weak, it's going to break. So you got to ask yourself, which would I, which thing would I rather have breaking, okay, uh, when you strengthen something up. And sometimes it's better to just leave the thing that broke to let it break and just fix it than to reinforce it. Because the other thing is that every time you reinforce something, you're adding weight. And at a certain point, like you could say, okay, well, I'm going to double up the bottom plate and I'm going to double up the top plate and I'm going to have five millimeter arms. And now you've added 40 grams, maybe. Well, is that worth it? Eh, it's your call. But eventually, and weight isn't also a topic for another video, but eventually you reinforce something to the point where you've got a big rock flying through the air, right? Instead of a nice, light, agile quadcopter. Okay, so that's the tip for this one. Whenever something breaks and you think, should I reinforce this? Ask yourself, in a crash, where is the force coming from that broke this and where is it going to end up when, you know, when I reinforce this? Because the force doesn't go away. It just moves from point A to point B to point C. And you can eventually something breaks or not. But if you move the force from point A to point B and point B is just as weak as point A was, then you're just, you're, you're just causing something else to break. And maybe that's okay. Like... I, I, I hold this on, like I used to hold this camera mount on with zip ties. And the problem is that the seams of this 3D printed camera mount run this way. And so as soon as you'd get a good crash, it would just tear at the seams and I have to replace the bracket. So now I'm holding it on with foam tape. And uh, by the way, the camera is, is now tied to the top plate instead of to the mounting bracket. Okay, so this zip, this uh, Velcro strap is going underneath the top plate and around, whereas it used to just go underneath the, the, the bottom plate of the camera bracket, right? Does that make sense? So the idea is that the only purpose of this foam tape is that if the Velcro strap gives out and the camera goes flying, 
I won't have to look through the glass, the grass for this. This is not structural in any way. And the idea is now I, I stop breaking these, right? So that's good. I like that. Anyway, yeah, always be thinking about that, thinking about, you know, where is the force coming from? Where is it going to? And if something breaks and I reinforce it, where is the force going to go from there? Make things strong enough, but no stronger. Because if you strap everything down like a, like a gorilla, then, then stuff's going to break and you're not going to be in control of what breaks. But by choosing to have weak spots, like this Velcro strap is a, is a weakish spot and this foam tape is a weakish spot. But if I fly under a branch and it shears this whole thing off, right, the strap's going to break and the foam tape is going to give out. The camera's going to go flying, but hopefully the camera will be okay. Whereas if I strap this on super tight, then the camera is potentially going to break, okay? So anyway, there you go. Hope that's helpful, and I'll look for more videos in this series coming up in the future.